This is another chapter of self-advocacy. Now, one of the important things about self-advocacy is I said in the previous video for self-advocacy in the medical field is <coughs> what you believe of yourself because that is like one of the first big steps that need to be looked at. You know, and this is self-advocacy in, in a variety of settings. <coughs> and, and it is hard to be at a party and everybody's talking to each other, but the person down here who's in that wheelchair right around here, you know, is, is not paid attention to or is not spoken to. And you're just kind of riding around in the group and listening to conversations and everybody's like talking up here and you're not included. <laughs> Have you ever had that experience? You've been at meetings and everybody goes around and shares and puts in their information but they skip over you and you're like, what the heck? <laughs> so, um, this will happen to you over and over. But your perception of yourself is going to be critical and it is the first thing that needs to be worked on before you can, you know, get dressed, get in your wheelchair, and get out there to wherever it is, whether it's work, whether it's um, just going out in the community, just going out to a little restaurant with your friend, one-on-one -on -one is much easier. That person gets to know you and say, oh, yeah, they're a pretty cool person. <laughs> but when it has to do with groups, it is more challenging because, again, the conversations are happening up here and <coughs> you're way down here in the chair. So how do you remain you know, physically you have to remain here, but how do you raise your voice to get up here? And do you want to raise it is the question. Do you want to raise that voice? And, and why? So internally the work has to start there not externally, or what you can convince and put on a fake mask and jump into conversations. No, because it'll crumble. That's a very temporary thing. You just put on a mask and faked it for a little while and then you left. Hmm. That doesn't work. <laughs> has to be something more lasting. Like, yes, I'm in this wheelchair, but I haven't changed. I mean, I am the same person. I have the same values. I have the same dreams. I just have a, a wheelchair around me so I can get from point A to point B, but it doesn't destroy who I really am. I'm hoping that's true for you because otherwise you're in trouble. <laughs> no, truly, if if you're having a lot of difficulty, you know, rising up above and away from, you know, the trauma of the accident or the illness or whatever happened, you know, counseling could be um, an important thing. Uh, it, it's, it's very helpful. <coughs> so consider counseling, six sessions, four sessions, you know, whatever it might be to work on that self-esteem so that you can recover and to be who you want to be. And for that value within you not to remain way down here, but to be able to raise, rise up, you know, and, and match up and be able to jump into the conversations that are happening up here. Self-esteem, you know, self-advocacy, 
Self-advocacy is based on the internal and external value of yourself. Internal and external value of yourself. Then you can speak up and advocate for yourself. But without the internal and external value of yourself, Self-advocacy is not going to happen. <coughs> Self-advocacy won't happen. So this is really important for you to look yourself in the mirror and start to have those conversations with that person in the mirror and who you see, who you, who you hope to become. But again, you know, growth has to happen for, the, for you to feel safe and secure in the self-advocacy arena. And, you know, some of us want to advocate for all these kind of people. And I'm going to go out there and change the world and advocate for people in wheelchairs. But you have to work on yourself first. The work has to happen here before you can do others. It has to start here, and then, you know, to advocate for yourself a little bit and practice that self-advocacy until it's strong, secure, and well-anchored. Then you can a advocate for others. But you have to accumulate that wisdom and recognize that you might have been in that truck. You might have been had that accident. So-and-so was driving. You know, all the trauma that comes with that if it was an accident or bungee jumping or whatever it was that, you know, turned your life upside down and now you're in a wheelchair permanently. However, you know, as you went through therapy and you learned all these tricks of the trade, and now you're taking care of yourself, and it's hard, it's challenging, it's, you know, there's some good days, some bad days, you know, and that should be okay. You have to find that arena in which you are at peace. So it's really that internal work that has to happen for you to be able to practice self-advocacy. And where are you at with that? Have you been hiding at home? Are you in that space of anger? Sadness? Grief? And those stages are important, so you can't skip around them. <laughs> you have to go through them. And it's okay to be angry. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to be depressed. It's okay to go through the grief. You, you, you have to go through those stages. And then, then once the, s the smoke clears away, then you can say, okay, now, now I can start working on myself and knowing that my life is okay. Despite this wheelchair underneath me, it's going to be okay. <laughs> um, now I can start building. <coughs> and to know who I am in this wheelchair. Who I was, who I am now. And build up that person. Be proud. Be joyful. Bring back those jokes. Maybe you were bad at jokes. <laughs> You'll skip those. Find a hobby. Do something for yourself. Look at your clothing, your hygiene. How's all that going? 
kind of routine do you have? What kind of things are you eating? Sometimes we get into stress eating. So, you know, how are things at home? How are things organized at home? How can you start to improve those little things so you feel comfortable, happy, you know, where things are at? Say, okay, I did this for myself. Now I want to go do something for somebody else. And the next day you do it again. Let's see what, what other things can I improve in my home? How can I improve my grocery shopping? How can I improve, you know, what I buy <laughs> to eat at home? What kind of movies do I want to have at home that I enjoy? What kind of gatherings would I like? Do I want to try doing puzzles or try basketball or, you know, start stretching out to be that new person who you are seeking and build it? So the next time you're at a gathering, next time you're at a party, next time you are at a grocery store and you need to advocate for yourself, you're just fine with that. <laughs> You are really fine with saying, no, thank you, I'm just looking around, or no, thank you, I, I got what I needed, <clears throat> or yes, thank you for asking, could you reach that mayonnaise jar that's way up there <laughs> that I need? That would be awesome. <laughs> so not to feel embarrassed if somebody offers you help at the grocery store. A couple of aisles over, I really wanted this specific bottle of ketchup, but it's on a shelf where I can't reach it. Could you do me that favor, you know? And not feel embarrassed that people are offering you help. Be okay with the help. And be okay with saying, no, I don't need help. Because there are times where we don't need help. <laughs> I appreciate it when the clerks come over and, and say, did you find everything you need? And I'll say, yes, thank you. I appreciate the offer. So, but that's because I've practiced. Before, I didn't want to tell anybody. I wanted to be invisible. I wanted to do it all on my own. <clears throat> and I couldn't. I still can't. <laughs> if I go to the grocery store, I still can't do it on my own. <coughs> so it's building up from the bottom up for us to feel happy with who we are and can we improve that a little bit as the days go by and for self-advocacy to be able to happen and not in an angry way but a relaxed way thank you you know I don't need a push I don't need, you know, anything from the higher shelves, so I, I'm good. <laughs> Thanks for offering. Instead of getting mad, because some, some people with disabilities get really mad. You know, the other day I, I, I went to my clinic for an appointment. In the van, there was a gal who was blind, and she had her, her cane with her. <clears throat> and as I was at the counter checking in, she, she showed up a few steps behind me, but she was running into the belt, you know, where they have those posts and, and they have belts to guide people in line. And she was bumping into the, she didn't know what that was. She wasn't using her cane either. I thought this gal's going to kill herself. So I turned around really quick and I went over. And I held her hand, and I said, my name is Lisa. I'm going to guide you to the desk. Um, I'm in a power wheelchair, so I'm going to be at a foot distance away from you. Um, I'm going to pull you away from the belt so you're not bumping into it. 
So she just she just tapped. She bumped into one of the posts, but she was okay. I pulled her away a little bit more from the posts and the and the tabs and the strips there, and I guided her towards the the counter. Said, so "Now you're at the counter. the The gal, the counselor is going to check you in, and then they're going to help you, you know, be seated. So you just stay here, and they're going to help you now." So. Um, she was not using her cane at all. So I'm assuming she was new as uh, a blind person and she was not using her cane at all. So she was probably there to practice and she was just lost and didn't have anybody with her. So, you know, and she didn't ask for help either. So she was about to really fall over the the bands and and probably take a few posts with her so <laughs> so that kind of person is is a person who really needs to practice and gain that security of themselves you know <clears throat> and she wasn't capable at that moment to ask for help so um, that's very difficult I don't even know how she got to the right place <laughs> But um, she got there, somebody brought her, and, and then I brought her the rest of the way. But those are the people, I was like that, you know. Uh, and so I, I recognized it right away, like she was not speaking up and not saying, I can't find my way. I don't know where I am. I don't know what the strip is. <laughs> so it was a sad scene. But... Um, and then the, the receptionist help her, helped her after checking her in, helped her to, over to the seat. So and she did a much job, better job than I did. But <clears throat> um, I just went to grab her before she fell because that's where she was going. And, and that's for all of us, you know. What do we need to do before we fall? <laughs> before we absolutely crash? because we were not able to ask for help because we, uh, we felt like we didn't deserve it. And she was probably there to learn how to use her cane. <laughs> so, um, you know, she was probably a very beginner. This probably happened recently, and, and she didn't know, you know, how to get through the obstacles, which... Blind people have a lot of obstacles, um, and and it's 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 a struggle. So, you know, uh, I'm hoping in my clinic, I and I think in my clinic they have some some ways that that people can use their cell phone to be able to get through the building, um, and it verbally explains you know where you are. <coughs> so I, I felt really bad for her, but but I had to. You know, I just had to, I recognize it, and I moved quickly, bugs, <laughs> I moved quickly to grab her. So, you know, sometimes we need to do that for other people, um, and I was a little, little slow. I said, oh, this is the gal in the van. <laughs> Let me grab her before she goes over the, the belt. So... So, yeah, and I could get to her faster than the receptionist. Because I was on wheels. <laughs> so <laughs> there was an advantage of myself being in a wheelchair. So know that there are advantages of you being in a wheelchair. It's a tool. It's a tool, and it's going to help you first. But it could help somebody else at some point. It could uplift somebody else without you knowing it. My speed was able to help this gal and not fall over the, the, the band <laughs> that was in her way. She was trying to get to the, to the desk, but there was this obstacle. So I took off in my power wheelchair and got there before she hurt herself. So <clears throat> if, I, if my self-esteem hadn't been worked on, then, you know, I would have said, oh, somebody, somebody's got to help her. I wouldn't have made the move that I made. So, so 
So self-advocacy happens, will happen for you, but you have to make sure that you internally are strong and recognize who you are and you are okay saying yes, no, and getting included in conversations. So you have to ask yourself, where are you at? What are your thoughts about yourself and what are your feelings about yourself and where do you need to work on? And do you need a counselor to start building yourself up? <coughs> I had to do that. Many of us have to do that. Being in a wheelchair is not easy. So I'll leave you with those thoughts. Self-advocacy. Where do you need to start? Or where do you need to start practicing? Look in that mirror, start having those conversations, find a counselor if you need some help along the way, and then self-advocacy will happen. And then, then you can help others. <laughs>